Okay, today we are going to start talking about how to actually compute a confidence interval, and we're specifically going to talk about proportion problems. Um, section 8.3 gets into problems with means, but in 8.2, just proportion problems. So common proportion problems you're going to see, it'll say what proportion, um, and usually it would be some sort of categorical variable. So like unemployment, are you employed or not, that sort of thing. Um, so the formula that we're going to use for proportion problems looks like this. Um, yesterday we talked about the general idea that you take a point estimate. This was like our pin in our graph in the back of the room. And then we added a margin of error or we subtract a margin of error and that gives us this kind of window um, that we're going to be pretty confident that the true um, population mean or proportion falls somewhere in this range of values. So here's the formula, point estimate plus or minus margin of error. That's all we did yesterday. Now here's the actual formula if it's a proportion problem. So our point estimate would be p hat. This would be a sample proportion. Then we're going to have this z star, which is called a critical value. I'll teach you how to figure that out. And then this is the standard deviation formula that you used even last chapter. The only difference is that now it's p hats instead of p, because we no longer know the population proportion. We're trying to use our sample proportion to estimate what our population proportion is. So last chapter they gave us p, but in real life you wouldn't know that. That's why you would take a sample to try to estimate it. So everything we're using now are p hats, so that's different. The margin of error is calculated by taking this critical value times the standard deviation. So margin of error is made up of two parts. Now that z star in the formula, um, I want to show you how to figure out what z star to use. And it's based on whatever percent confidence level you're dealing with. So if we were dealing with an 80% confidence, um, that would represent the middle 80% of kind of like a, a normal curve. So the middle 80% would be, oh, I don't know, like let's just kind of estimate, maybe like here would be the middle 80%. Um, now, if the middle 80% is right here, then that means that there's 20% left over or 10% in each tail. And this would mark the 10th percentile, the amount to the left is 10%, so it's the 10th percentile. This marks the, I'm going to try to go all the way down here, that would mark the 90th percentile, or 0 0.90. And what our job would be is to figure out what would be the z-score for the 10th percentile, and what would be the z-score for the 90th percentile. So what you would do is you would get out your z-chart and you would look up the closest thing to 0 0.10 in the main body of the table and you would work your way backwards to figure out what the z-score would be. And you would do the same thing. You would look up the closest thing to 0 0.90 and then you would figure out what the z-score would be. So when you look those up on your chart, you should see that the z-score down here is negative 1.28 and the z-score here is positive 1.28. And it makes sense that one's positive and one's negative because of the symmetry. We have exactly the same amount to the right and the same amount to the left. So then when we go to talk about what our z-star is, Z star is always going to be a positive value, so we really only need to look at the positive version. So 1.28 would be the number that we would plug in um, to our, I'm going to go back a page, to our Z star right here if we were told to make an 80% confidence interval. 
okay? This is only the Z star for an 80% confidence interval. So what we're gonna do now is look at the most common confidence levels, 90, 95, and 99. And we're gonna figure out what the Z stars are for those because the Z stars here are gonna be what you use the most. So the process is the exact same. So if I have middle 90%, that means there's 10% total left over, which means that there would be 5% in each of these tails. So this marks the fifth percentile, 0 0.05. And this would mark the 95th percentile, because everything to the left is 90 plus that 5. So the 95th percentile, 0.95. And what we need to do is figure out what is the z-score at 0 0.05, what is the z-score at 0.95. Now, on the last slide, remember, they're going to be symmetric. One will be positive, one will be negative. And ultimately, we want to go for the positive one. That will be our z-star. So, I mean, I really wouldn't need to calculate this negative one. I could just worry about the positive one. So that's what I'm going to do for all of these, just to be more efficient. So we're going to look up 0.95, the closest thing to 0.95 in our chart, and then we're going to figure out what would the z-score be. Now when you look up the closest thing to 0.95 in your chart, and it would be helpful if you had your chart out and you were looking at this too, um, you're going to get a z-score that could either be 1.64 or it could be 1.65. So what we're going to do for our Z star is we're going to split that difference and we're going to say 1.645. That's what you would do if it's ever between two values. That happens every now and then. So anytime you're doing a 90% confidence level, you're going to use 1.645 for the Z star. Okay, similarly here with 95%, that would mean in the tails that we have 2.5% in each tail. And again, we really only need this positive one up here. Um, so what percentile would this be at? It would be everything to the left. So it would be 95 plus 2.5. So that's 97.5, 0.975. And if we look up the closest thing to 0.975 on our Z chart, we are going to get a Z score of 1.96. So that means that every time we do a 95% confidence level, we're going to have a Z star of 1.96. Okay, and then lastly, 99% is a very common um, confidence level. That would mean that we have half of a percent in the top tail over here and half of a percent in the bottom tail. So this would mark the 99.5th percentile, 0.995. And when you go look that up in your chart, you're looking for the closest thing to 0.995. And it's going to be between two values again. It's going to be between 2.57 and um, 2.58. So what we're going to do then for our Z star is split the difference and say 2.575. So these are our most common Z scores. So again, when you use your formula here, this Z star is dependent on what confidence level, what percent confidence level. Maybe we should write that in here. Okay, so that's going to change for each problem. And here's just a summary. These are the most common ones you're going to use. Um, what you'll notice is this one, 2.576. That's a little bit different than what we got on the last page. We had 2.575. Um, this is the more exact one. So this is what we're going to go with. 
Okay, so now we just need to practice actually computing a confidence interval. So again, here's your formula. Um, you need to show the formula, um, then you need to show the numbers plugged in, then you're going to show something plus or minus a number, and then you're going to give it in interval form. So it's going to be like parentheses, lower bound, and an upper bound. And I'll show you how to do that. And then you're going to have to be able to interpret what you just found. This is the same interpretation that we had in yesterday's notes. So you're going to just fill in the blanks. I am, let's say, 90% confident that the interval from, let's say, 0.25 to 0.32 captures the true proportion of people who, um, I don't know, say yes to a certain question, whatever it might be. All right, so here's a scenario that we're going to walk through. The owner of a popular barbecue restaurant called the Smoke Shack Barbecue Pit wishes to know what proportion of completed dishes are being served immediately after being prepared. A random sample of 75, so that means that n equals 75. A random sample of 75 dishes found that 60 were served immediately. So our sample proportion was 60 were served out of the 75 selected. 60 were served on time. So if you type that in your calculator, you're going to get 0 0.80. So 80% of our sample was served on time. We want to use this information to estimate what the true population proportion of all dishes are served immediately. We're going to find and interpret a 95% confidence interval. So if it's 95% confidence, what will be the Z star that we use? Let's look back here. 95% confidence would be 1.96. Okay, so we are going to calculate our interval. So here's the formula, p hat plus or minus z star times square root of p hat 1 minus p hat over n. And we're just going to fill everything in. So our sample proportion was 0 0.80. The z star, because we have a 95% confidence, is 1.96. The p hat is the same here. It's still 0 0.80 times 1 minus 0 0.80, all over our sample size, which was 75. OK, so now you need to show what all of the stuff after the plus or minus is. So you would type all of this in your calculator and get just a single number. And when you get that single number, it ends up being 0 0.0905. 2, 9. Now, if you're ever asked what's the margin of error, this is the margin of error. So remember, if we go back to our formula, both the z star and the standard deviation together, everything after the plus or minus is our margin of error. Okay, that's what we're going to add to our point estimate and subtract from our point estimate. And that's going to give us this kind of window here. Um, so now what we need to do is get our actual interval. So we're going to do 0 0.80 minus 0 0.090529 subtract first because that's going to give you your lower bound. So we'll get 0 0.709 and then do a comma and now do 0 0.80 plus 0 0.090529 to get our upper bound which would be 0 0.891. So this is our interval right here. Okay so we have found it now we need to interpret it. 
what we're going to interpret over here. So for interpreting, we're going to follow this little fill in the blank here. So I am what percent confident? I am 95% confident. that the interval from, whoop, sorry about that, that the interval from where to where point seven zero nine to 0.891 captures the true proportion of and then put it in the context of the problem. So what are we finding the proportion of? Completed dishes served immediately. So I'll say proportion of dishes served immediately. At the smoke shack. barbecue pit. Okay, so in other words, we're very sure, very certain, 95% certain, that the proportion of dishes that are being served immediately is somewhere between 70.9% and 89.1%. And yeah, that's kind of a big range, but again, we're really confident. And the more confident you are, the bigger the range it is. Okay. Now you're also going to have some problems, and this is going to look familiar, where we want to have a small margin of error. Um, so we need to figure out what sample size we should take so that our margin of error is small. Okay, so the sample size needed to obtain a confidence interval with approximate margin of error can be found by solving this. So again, remember our formula from before. Margin of error is all of this, the z-star and the standard deviation part. So here's our margin of error formula. Okay. Now we are trying to figure out the sample size. So um, we want to find n. But here's the thing. If we haven't even figured out our sample size, that means we haven't even done our experiment yet or our survey yet. So how would we know what our sample proportion is? So we don't. At the moment, if we're trying to figure out what sample size we should use, that means we don't know p hat yet. We haven't even done anything yet. We're still in the stages of planning. So what you can do is you can use a guessed value based on some past study. That would work. Or if you don't have a guess available, the most conservative guess would be to use 0.5. And the reason is, is that the margin of error is the largest when p hat is 0.5. So that's being conservative, like you're overestimating your margin of error. So again, you either need to use some previous past p hat from a different study, or if you don't have that available, use 
because that's a conservative guess. All right, so here's our last example. Find the sample size needed to obtain a margin of error of 0 0.03, and we're using a 90% confidence interval. So if they're telling us 90% confidence, then we have to figure out, oh, what Z star? 1.645. And we're trying to find the sample size. So that means we don't know what n should be. Um, and in part a, we're going to use a previous poll. So our p hat is going to be 0 0.42. So this is some previous data that was used. OK, so um, our margin of error is going to be 0 0.03. Okay, and what's the formula for margin of error? Um, here's your formula for margin of error. So it's z star times the square root of p hat times 1 minus p hat over n. And our goal is to solve for n. So we have to plug in everything else. So z star, because it's 90% confidence, is going to be 1.645 and we're using a previous polls sample proportion of 0.42 and now what we're going to do is solve for n. So you can't square both sides just yet. You should divide out this 1.645 right off the bat. So if you divide 0 0.03 by 1.645 you're going to get 0 0.018237. OK, so now what you can do is square both sides. OK, and I need some more room. So when you square this decimal, you get 0 0.000333. And over here, we no longer have the square root, so we can do 0 0.42 times 1 minus 0 0.42 over n. And we can cross multiply, so we can do 0 0.000333 times n equals, and then this top stuff, 0.42 times 1 minus 0.42 is 0.2436. And then in order to get n alone, we would have to divide 0.2436 by 0 0.000333. All right, so we get, for our sample size, 731.532 and we can't have a fraction of a person in our sample so it's best if we round up. This will make our margin of error just slightly smaller than 0 0.03. Okay now that was when we used a previous poll. If we did not have that information, we could use a conservative estimate of 0.5. The only thing that that would change, basically we could start at this point, the only thing that's going to change is the p hat that we use would be 0.5 instead of 0.42. Otherwise, the rest of the problem is exactly the same setup. So again, we would divide out this 1.645, and then we would multiply by, oh, I forgot the square root. We would square both sides, get rid of that square root, and we would get 
same thing over on the left side. But now on the right side, um, if I multiply by n, the, the 0.5 times the 1 minus 0.5 is going to give us 0.25. So in order to get n alone, I need to do 0.25 divided by 0 0.000333. And then N this time would be 750.751. So I would round that up to 751. So um, it just depends on what P hat you use, either a previous poll or a conservative estimate. Okay, so now as far as your homework, um, you are going to do homework number two. It's going to be page, I gotta find it now. Here we go. Page 482. Um, you're going to do number 12. Um, numbers 33 and 34, you are going to calculate the confidence interval. And interpret it. Okay, so that's going to be just like this example, where we calculated the confidence interval and then we interpreted it. So that's for both 33 and 34. Then you're going to do 44, 50, and 52. So that is your assignment um, for Wednesday, online day. Okay, maybe we'll see you tomorrow.